Here's the update on day 20 of the Israel-Hamas war, 2023, October 26th. All right, let's go. I'm actually gonna wrap this up with something maybe a little bit funny, if that is possible. Um, all right, let's start with Gaza. Always stuff going on in Gaza. Um, they are now above 7,000 killed in Gaza. There are 2 million people, 2 million residents of the Gaza Strip, and now the death toll stands at 7,000. That includes the family of an Al Jazeera reporter, Wael al Dahdu, who lost his wife, his son, and his daughter. Okay, in the north, Hezbollah said that they have lost already 44 of their fighters in uh, cross-border exchanges with Israel. Nothing there has escalated yet, but Israel and Lebanon both have evacuated communities near their respective borders. Um, while no formal ground invasion has been launched by Israel, though it were imminent for 20 days now, there was a foray into Gaza last night by Israeli troops. Other than that, we are in an ominous lull, as it were. Yes, there's da daily airstrikes by Israel on Gaza, and yes, there are rockets from Hamas at Israel every single day, including right now. I see an alert popping up on my screen um, in the center in Tel Aviv area. Okay, so we still have in Israel 300,000 plus reserve troops all called up and waiting. Now, President, uh, Prime, Minister, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu last night addressed the nation. He said the goal of Israel's war is twofold, to eliminate Hamas entirely and to bring back all of the hostages to Israel. There are 224 hostages from Israel in Gaza right now or in Hamas hands. Don't know where they are actually right now. But um, that number has gone up despite the fact that four hostages have been released. The number today was given as 224 and that's as uh, Israel goes through and identifies still there's missing people and there's bodies that have been unidentified so they don't have a total number yet on the total number of deaths which so far stands at 1,400 and the total number of kidnapped which is at 224. So Netanyahu said the army is preparing for a ground invasion but he did not elaborate. He said when we go into Gaza in the continuation of the fighting, we will exact the full price from the murderers, those who perpetrated Hamas ISIS horrors. I again call on the non-combatant population in Gaza evacuate the Southern Strip. Now, according to the Israeli army, Hamas is preventing residents from evacuating the North. Uh, the army released what it says is audio of a call placed by an Israeli officer to a Palestinian who said Hamas is blocking, uh, is using roadblocks and is even shooting at people to force them to go back. Also, the Israeli military is trying to reach citizens of Gaza and offer protection and compensation in exchange for information on hostages. This is what the IDF said yesterday. Now, for anybody who has been in the Middle East long enough, we know that that is a big ask from the Israeli army. Any Palestinian, anyone found to be collaborating with Israel is subject to an instant death sentence. But with the nonstop Israeli bombing of Gaza, some people might look at that as a good idea. Only time will tell. Today, I joined a uh, press briefing with Hadass Calderon. Today is her son's 12th birthday, and he is one of the 224 hostages that have been taken, that was taken, as she said, from his bed in his pajamas and is now in Hamas hands. Uh, he is also with his sister, Sahar, 16 year old, who's believed to also be there and their father. Uh, Hadass talked about her niece and her mother, both who were assumed kidnapped, but their bodies were found two weeks later. 
She said she is wavering between hope and grief and she's barely been able to grieve for her mother because she's fighting for the release of her children. So, and another big deal in the last couple of days is this huge brouhaha between Israel and the United Nations Secretary General, uh, Antonio Guterres, who appeared to justify the Hamas massacres when he said that they did not happen in a vacuum. Yad Vashem, Yad Vashem chairman, Yad Vashem is the Holocaust Memorial here in Israel. Uh, the chairman of Yad Vashem, Danny Dayan, said no, this was genocidal and that the UN, the UN chief failed the test of never again when referring to the Holocaust. He said those who seek to understand, look for a justifying context, do not categorically condemn the perpetrators and do not call for the unconditional immediate release of the abducted, fail the test. Guterres later doubled down despite criticism and he clarified it in a tweet, or is it an X now? He posted on Twitter or on, X, on social media. The grievances of the Palestinian people cannot justify the horrific acts by Hamas. Those horrendous attacks cannot justify the collective punishment of the Palestinian people. So now, wider picture of the region, the US is sending back up to the Middle East and um, they're sending a fleet that has, I'm gonna read this, Terminal High Altitude Area Defense, THAAD which is a system that intercepts ballistic missiles during their final phase of flight. Now, I've um, got a video about who are the Houthis. It's a rebel group based in Yemen. And last week, they are believed to have uh, launched a, a missile at Israel, a long range missile that would have crossed all the way over the Red Sea into Southern Israel, but it was shot down by an American uh, force in the Red Sea. So anyway, it's you know not for nothing that the US is sending more uh, such um, military to the region, like including in, in the Mediterranean Sea and in the Red Sea. So now I did say I was gonna end on something funny. So interestingly enough, uh, despite this near three weeks now of a national mourning and grieving and um, here and of course the situation is not much better uh, among the Palestinians. Um, Israel's premier comedy show called Eretz Neaderet, which is, means it's a wonderful country or what a wonderful country. I don't know the exact uh, how they would translate it exactly. They actually had a show last night for the first time in a long time. Now I was surprised and I wondered, wow, how are they going to be funny in a situation like this? I mean, we're subject to the news, 24 seven stories on the local news here of survivors, of people who lost loved ones or their loved ones are kidnapped or missing. And it's just story after story. I mean, depression, de horrible, um, horrific stories to hear. And yet they want to go and put on their comedy show. And I was like, how are they going to pull this off? So I have to say they may have done a really good job actually pulling it off very tastefully. Their first, I'll just tell you about the first scene um, in which the, um, well, actually let me back it up. Now in Israel, leading up to this, there what had been happening every single week were protests against uh, the government's uh, um, proposed judicial reform. So it was these massive protests. It just totally polarized the country. Either you were a thousand percent for it or a thousand percent against it. And there were protests every single week for the last 40 weeks. So Israel was very divided along ideological lines, religious lines. Um, and even during these protests, people had threatened to um, like a reserve soldiers, uh, pilots uh, who would be called up for the Air Force. They said, we're, we're going to strike. We will not, you know, report to duty be, to show their opposition to this, um, to this judicial reform. Uh, even businesses uh, did so. The high tech industry protested against it. Well, the first 
scene of the show, Eretz Nehderet, was uh, showing the reserve troops being called up and the sergeant standing there outside the bus and she is yelling, okay, high techs, yeah, on the bus. Um, reserve soldiers that were striking, yep, yeah, on the bus. And she goes through the list of Israeli society, all the ones that were for, that were against, that had previously been against each other, been enemies and whatever. And she just threw them all on the bus and they all went together. And uh, it was funny, but it also showed that how the country has come together during this time. So very tastefully done a uh, way to laugh at yourselves, but also look truthfully at the situation, whereas three weeks ago, there was a lot of division. Now the country has become very united. Now, I wanna clarify, I am not speaking for this, for this or for that or against this or against that. I'm just telling you what I'm seeing and what I'm picking up in the news and in the media. So this was an interesting look at the about the of the culture of the people uh, who how they think and uh, what's going on so I thought it was an interesting tidbit to pass along so thank you for tuning in and hit the subscribe button if you want to get more posts like this as I upload videos about the situation on the ground here in Jerusalem <laughs>